what's what's your reaction to all this? So how are you, how are you feeling about a, a High Republic live action series with the uh, preteen stars? No, I think I mean the whole, just just the idea of strangely enough we had the big Stranger Things announcement today, which I didn't I caught a little bit of. Um, the idea of Stranger Things in in Star Wars I think is really interesting, even if it is like obviously not going to be like the kids swearing at each other all the time. Um, you know, <laughs> the whole concept of that, of like, and if you think about it, we haven't had that many like preteens in star Wars. Like if you think about it, we had Anakin, Jake Lloyd was great in my opinion, but like other than that, we haven't had a lot of like stories focused on kids, at least on in a live action sense. So like, I like this a lot, obviously putting in the High Republic era. I'm glad we're already kind of getting into that. I feel like the fandom has very much embraced the High Republic pretty well. Um, I've enjoyed all the books and stuff that I've read. Um, so, like, I like that they're continuing to move into this. And, you know, we're going to get stuff even before the Acolyte. And uh, considering what they're doing with the publishing, which is like jumping around in the timeline. We're going to go back in time now. Saw someone, I think it was Matthew Hardy, who was like, what if this is young Avar Chris and Elzar Man? Like, mm. that's possible. I don't know. You know, I, I think the precedent is there that they could jump around in the timeline. Or it could be just completely new characters, which I, I kind of hope so. I, as much as I like those characters, I hope that like the show can kind of do its own thing. I, I see the High Republic as like this really interesting era where kind of there's stuff going on but also you can kind of do whatever you want and mm -hmm. there's no like precedent to like connect everything yeah. um or and, and especially worth, connect to the movies yeah it's worth noting that, that like there's a difference between the high republic era and the high republic publishing initiative right like right, the high republic right. era spans a lot of time and we know mm -hmm. that you know the people who are writing those books that make up the high republic series they don't really have a say in in other stuff going on in that era. You know, when that when that game was announced, um, a lot of the authors were sort of you know saying, "Yeah, we don't know, we, we don't know, we didn't know about this. This is this is news to us." And and you know maybe who knows what the creatives on other shows like the Acolyte would maybe they would want to get in touch with the luminous authors, um, but maybe they can't. Maybe they don't have time for that sort of thing. And and so it's you know sort of spread out all over the high republic era um so it's it's worth keeping that in mind that just because this says high republic and it doesn't mean avar and stellan and and elzar are going to be the main character it's, and and honestly i don't that's an interesting theory but i i find that unlikely because because those characters are supposed to be a, a trio right like they're 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 a trio and and in their backstory is they all grew up together and they were super tight together and we've already got four kids in in this casting breakdown assuming it's legitimate so one of the kids is gonna die or be kicked out of the group like that doesn't seem like something that that's likely to happen on the show so i i mm. i i would love to see the adventures of of young avar stellan and, and elzar someday but i don't think it's this so yeah because there's two things going on here either they're using the high republic era as a catch-all for just anybody who wants to do a story that is not related to anything else mm -hmm. um and like all right well you want to do a star wars story and it's not about luke skywalker mm -hmm. obi-wan kenobi so uh do it in the high republic era because it's just this <laughs> big blank giant canvas thing where you can just like so that's one thing and then the other concept is that they're going to do the same thing with the High Republic that they're doing with the uh, current era, which is connect everything together in any opportunity that they have. So I don't know which I think we're going to have to see a few of these projects before we start getting a feel for what their plan is in the High Republic. Are they trying to create another overarching storyline, have it kind of be the new MCU of of Star Wars since it's kind of chronologically all over the place with the uh the current era that they're working in or or is this just going to be a blanket label for anything star wars that happens before the phantom menace and it, nothing has to do with anything necessarily has to do with anything else the vibe i'm getting now is that it's it's that it's yeah. you know it's a blanket term for anything pre-phantom menace and they're they're not going 
super far back in time so we're not gonna see you know jedi on on horseback with swords or anything like that like we're, we're where's we're... that show come on <laughs> that I, I, ryan look, johnson be... let's go yeah <laughs> that was what I, benny hoff and weiss were I mean, we almost got it in rise of skywalker let's be honest yeah <laughs> um, true but uh, but it does seem to be kind of a catch-all term so you know i it, from what i've read of what the the authors have said it sounds like they have a very specific plan for their series of books and comics that are going on and you know probably the people that are working on other things are at least tangentially aware of it um you know we've talked in the past about uh, leslie headland who's the showrunner for the acolyte and her love of star wars books and and that sort of thing and and the, the galaxy of star wars so it wouldn't surprise me if she looks to try and pull stuff in from what they're doing um, but then again, again, the game seems to be completely separate from that. So it, it, it'll be interesting. Maybe there's a, a bigger plan that we just can't see. Uh, or maybe it's one of those things where they're just going to let everybody do their own thing. And if they can cross over in, in some ways, great. If not, well, it's just a blanket term like Rise of the Empire for, for shows like Rogue One and Bad Batch and Solo and and or that don't really have a lot to do with each other other than wh what part of the timeline they're set in yeah yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how because like we've seen you know we've seen these things happen movies tv shows whatever like they're very good at like taking something and like this person's doing this story and then five years down the road someone picks up that ball and takes it and runs with it a la you know Cobb Vanth in the aftermath trilogy takes that takes that book character puts him in the mandalorian we have what we have today um but it's going to be interesting how like how that will work in the high republic era because like so much of this is publishing now but we're going to have these tv shows and games and who knows what else um will there will there be kind of a conscious effort to like you know cross things over in the moment or will it be like okay yeah you know maybe down the road we could see something in a tv show or whatever i think it, we're obviously spending a hundreds of years here so like <laughs> a lot of it's not going to be connected inevitably it, it wouldn't shock me if something if there's like some document that exists that lucasfilm story executives have that they give to anybody who says oh i want to do something before uh before phantom menace i want to do something in the high republic era and they can they can give them that and say here's what we've done already in it read it if you want to pull from it do it if you want to make up your own thing Try your best not to contradict anything in it, but if you do have to contradict something in it, make sure it's really good. <laughs> yeah. But as as to the show itself, I I love this idea of of doing you know doing a, a show like that a show like this because you know sometimes we forget that um, you know Star Wars is a kid is is for kids. It's a it's a franchise that was yeah. was primarily designed for children in the seventies and eighties and sometimes we lose sight of that and you know as great as things like the mandalorian and the book of boba fett are they can you know sometimes feel like they're catering a little bit more to the adult audience and and that's not necessarily a bad thing uh as long as you also have things that catered a little bit more towards the kids audience and they, uh, and things like you know uh, star wars resistance did that in in some ways and uh, and and perhaps this could do something like that in live action and and i and i don't mean that you know kids uh content i see because i see in the chat you know kids kids does not equal dumb things down no i i don't i, I agree with that it, it shouldn't sure. dumb it down but it does mean that you're that you're dealing in in different themes and different uh, I, I, material. I think i think the fact that you know stranger things was mentioned uh a few times you know uh, i think that that that's very telling as to what this is because you know when i re initially started reading about this i i didn't hear about the stranger things part of it so my assumption was that it would be kind of uh like a ya type show kind of similar to um uh resistance but live action and then that i had some interesting thoughts on that but hearing that compared to stranger things you know that 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 definitely is um a pg-13 more star wars like story um but the thing too is this this what this is going to do is it's going to perhaps get rid of this big distinction we have between the animated side of star wars and the live action side of star wars because while the live action side as you we mentioned off the top does not have a lot of kids and teenagers 
in it. I mean, in a mm-hmm. sense, Luke Skywalker is kind of, he is a teenager. Like Luke and Leia are there. They're yeah. 18, um, 18, 19 years old uh, in a new hope. Um, so that's like the closest thing that you get until Anakin um, and, and Phantom Menace. And then that's, that's really it for important characters, uh, lead characters that are in that age range. So you don't really have anyone in the like younger teenage year age range that is that was a major role in anything uh live action um so but when you look at the animated stuff it's all over that because mm-hmm. you've got ahsoka obviously in in the yep. clone wars um yep. is that age um and then uh you have omega and the bad batch is that age mm-hmm. multiple characters and Star Wars Resistance, you got Ezra and Sabine, and Star Wars Rebels. Pretty much everything animated has had at least one main lead character that has been in that age range because they assume that a lot of kids are going to be watching animated st- stuff because it's more age appropriate for younger audiences typically than the live action stuff. Um, although with Clone Wars, that was debatable, very debatable. <laughs> that whole thing where it's like, if this was a live action sequence, this might not be PG. Like, there's, there's a lot of that going on. Oh, yeah. Um, so, but this is great because it's merging those two concepts together. Because, like, like we've mentioned, Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian have had so many adult characters and haven't had that strong lead character that's a kid unless you count Gro- the 50 year old grogu as <laughs> as that because you could i guess if you divide by whatever in grogu that's, years that's young in grogu yeah. years. so um yeah so so th- this is great seeing those kind of two concepts that we've got and that have both worked in their own spaces together mm-hmm. as one which is a live action show that also focuses on adolescent characters kitty characters like that's that's really awesome. And once again, you know, I'm personally a huge fan of Stranger Things. I think it's one of the best shows that have come out in the last 10 years. So uh, just it excites me to hear that they're doing something like that in Star Wars, because that was something that was always great about uh, things like the Clone Wars was whenever they kind of ripped off something else. It was really interesting to see a Star Wars take on like a Hitchcock murder thing or something like that, or a zombie movie. And so it's cool that they're doing that with whole shows and kind of theming it around certain genres. Um, I think that's that's something they should continue to keep doing so we don't keep getting the same show over and over again, like (laughs) Wickable with Fed Amando. Yeah, I I, I will say I wouldn't read too much into the Stranger Things in Space line. Uh, It's all we have to go on. (laughs) That to me is that to me means there are four children on an adventure in a sci-fi setting. I mean, that's enough for me. And and that yeah, like that's that's very strange. That, that is Stranger yeah. Things, but that could also be a lot of other shows. And you can bet there are a, a lot that's of shows true. being developed right now that are Stranger Things meets, and yeah. they will be of varying degrees of um, you know mature the, mature maturity in in that sense and yeah. you know again you have to also have to look at the distribution uh network the streaming service that each of them comes out on netflix does a lot of you know does a lot of stuff that is very adult and and allows their their shows to have the swearing and the violence and the gore and all of that stuff that you see in stranger things uh Disney Plus does not allow those things. They don't allow uh, they don't allow swearing. They have very strict sort of their own strict rules about what you can and can't show. And you know something like Mandalorian will push those limits, but other shows have been canceled from Disney Plus before they even were made because uh, they wanted to go in a more mature direction. Like you know that everybody remembers on before D twenty three twenty nineteen they announced the. Um, Lizzie McGuire reboot that they were going to do the continuation series with her in her thirties. And they then reread some of those scripts and went, "Mm -mm, this is too mature for us. No. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, and the show didn't happen. So I, I do, I, 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 so the stranger things line, I'm not going to read too much into that in terms of the tone of the show. To me, that just describes roughly, roughly the layout of what's happening. And I, I would expect, a show on Disney Plus that features more, uh, you know, 
11, 12, 13, 10 year olds, that sort of thing. I, I would expect that to be more of a YA show, uh, which does not mean that it will be bad. There is a lot of good YA stuff out there. And some of the best Star Wars books in the last few years have been YA. Uh, so I think that's a, I, I, I don't think that's a, a bad thing at all. I think that I, I think that's something that Star Wars needs and something that it, it should do. So I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm all for this. I think this is, this should be, this could be, this should be really cool.